Abu Dhabi, the super-rich Middle Eastern Emirate sitting on 10% of the world's oil fields, is looking to rebrand itself as a nuclear and renewable energy titan. Can it? And why would it want to? Here to talk about the push to transform Abu Dhabi's image is Lin Chen Sim, Zayed University's Associate Professor specialising in international relations and oil politics. Lin Chen, welcome to Inside Knowledge. Thank you very much. Good morning. Abu Dhabi is the world's third largest oil exporter. It's, the extent of its petrochemical wealth is quite hard to imagine. How serious are its nuclear and renewable energy ambitions? Well, I think in terms of money, it's obviously a pretty serious deal. Um, that's 20 billion for four nuclear reactors and you have another 20 for Mastar. So that's quite serious money. Um, but as well, you have things like uh, the diplomacy that they've put in to gain uh, contracts. So it's not just money, it's diplomatic muscle, it's uh, time that they've put in. So yeah, they're pretty serious about promoting uh, nuclear and renewable energy. What's driving this policy shift? It's a very simple reason of a problem with a shortage of gas. Uh, in the past 10 years, demand for gas in Abu Dhabi has gone up by 60%. But the supply of gas has only gone up by about 10%. So you can see that there's a shortfall in that. Uh, and the reason for this huge increase in demand for gas, um, I think there are basically three reasons. Uh, firstly, uh, the shortage is caused by the fact that we've got an increased population. Uh, as you probably know, the population here has increased tremendously. Uh, I think it's now it's about up to 8 million people from 2 million maybe about uh, 20 years ago. So there's been a huge increase in population and they demand electricity, they demand gas, they demand water, they demand air conditioning. So all that is you know, increasing the demand for electricity. And then secondly, you have economic development, which has really accelerated uh, after His Highness Sheikh Zayed's death in 2004. And then thirdly, they also need a lot of gas, uh, which is the feedstock for electricity, to pump into oil fuels, which are aging. So one of the strategies to push the oil out of old oil fields is to put in gas, and that gas could have been used for electricity. So there's just a huge demand for gas. If gas is running out, why not just switch technology to use oil to produce electricity? Uh, with oil at like 120, 100 US dollars a barrel, that's going to be really expensive electricity because gas is much cheaper. Um, so, so it's just a question of opportunity cost. That's all. It's, it's just not worth it uh, to use the oil for domestic purposes when the world market is so hungry for oil. Why not other feedstocks such as coal? Uh, coal is uh, you know, one of the choices that uh, Abu Dhabi was considering, but the problem is that uh, they don't have domestic supplies of coal here in, in the UAE in Abu Dhabi. So you have a problem with supply security. You still have to buy coal from somewhere else. It is cheap, but it pollutes. So it's not as good as some other options, like nuclear, for example. If Abu Dhabi's primary reason to embrace renewable energy is economic, does the desire to be seen to be green or, or to raise its profile in an era of climate change have any impact? It definitely does. Um, I wouldn't say that its green credentials are a driving factor for them to adopt renewable and nuclear, but certainly it is like a fringe benefit. It's more like, you know, we need gas uh, to, for our economic development. Uh, we need renewables, we need nuclear. But hey, by the way, they can give us good PR as well. Um, they can give us good green, green credentials. So let's go for it, that's an additional reason. It's difficult to believe that a country whose economy is, is so dependent on oil would put a lot of resources into developing technology, which if successful, could put a, a dent, quite a dent into its major export. Are they really trying to push ahead and take the lead in this technology change, or is it more a matter of keeping up with what's happening? I'm not sure whether it's going to put a huge dent in their major uh, export product, which is oil. I mean, certainly oil has got a lot of competitors, gas, nuclear, renewable. Um, but don't forget that in terms of transportation, 99% of all transportation in the world runs on oil or oil products. So it's not really like they're killing the goose that lays the golden egg. Now, having said that, I think that Abu Dhabi has this vision of far-sighted enough to realize that they have to plan for the future. Uh, if you recall, the pearling industry here in Abu Dhabi was killed off by cultured pearls uh, from the Japanese. So they are very anxious to ensure that the same thing does not happen again with regards to oil. 
So what you're doing is using uh, renewable energy, for instance, as a hedge for the future. They can see that in the future, you're going to have like carbon credits. <clears throat> They're going to have more environmental, uh, environmental protection legislation coming in the world. So it's just like a hedge for the future. But also, I think they are quite keen to develop uh, renewable technologies to make sure that when the time comes to jump on the bandwagon, they are there, ready to take uh, the lead uh, in a lot of the renewable energy technologies in solar and wind, uh, etc. But um, that's for renewable energy, that they are quite concerned to use it as a hedge for future developments. But I think in nuclear, it's a different story. I think in nuclear, they are trying to be the leaders because they are very proud of the nuclear program as a kind of gold standard nuclear program, which no civilian uh, nuclear energy developer has gone through so far. What difficulties will Abu Dhabi have in rebranding itself in this clean green image? I think the difficulty comes uh, very simply with um, to convince a lot of skeptics. Um, you find that there are a lot of skeptics out there who say that this uh, green image is just a kind of whitewash so that Abu Dhabi can continue to export its oil, can continue to, to, uh, to pollute the environment. So just let's give it a good image so that people will continue buying Abu Dhabi oil, for example, and that's, that's the role of renewable energy. And skeptics look and say, hey, look, your target is only to have 7% of electricity produced by renewable energy by 2020. That's not a lot. If you look at other countries in Europe, they currently produce an average of 20% of their electricity needs from renewable energy. So I think to convince the skeptics, we, have, we do have to change domestic policy. We do have to end subsidies in energy, in water, uh, in electricity, to convince skeptics that uh, you know, we, we actually walk the talk, we're not just talking. And what's stopping them from doing this? Um, it's a lot of political concerns about the Arab Spring, for example. Um, the UAE has been able to use a lot of its oil money to, um, to, to smooth things out, such that the population uh, is not too uh, unhappy with the government. And there is a lot right now, uh, there is a lot of feeling here in Abu Dhabi and even in the Gulf that cheap energy is a national birthright for countries that have um, lots of oil and gas. It's a national birthright. So I think that for a lot of these uh, governments here in the Gulf and also in Abu Dhabi, the feeling is that let us not introduce close to market prices now while it's still sensitive. I think that they will do it in future. Uh, they probably have no choice. Li Chen, thanks for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you very much, Jane. Thank you.